In this video, I'll demonstrate how to calculate Lin's concordance correlation coefficient. Uh, this measures the agreement between two variables that are quantitative or continuous in nature, uh, such as what we would possibly do to evaluate reproducibility or inter-rater reliability. Now this is very similar to some of the other correlations we use for reliability, such as Pearson's correlation, but it appears to correct for some of the drawbacks that we might see with a Pearson correlation or an interclass correlation coefficient. Uh, it examines the relationship, the linear relationship between the two measurements, but it also assesses the slope of the line relating the two sets of scores. So it appears to be a little bit more of a robust way to assess reproducibility of measures, and it also works fairly well with smaller numbers of samples and seems to be effective with as many as, or as few as 10 sets of scores. So SPSS and Fortune does not have a part of their menu, uh, this particular correlation coefficient, but there is syntax that we can use to uh, produce this output. So I will put the link to the syntax uh, file that I used for this demonstration uh, in the description. And there's also a good web-based calculator out there that allows you to calculate Lin's concordance uh, correlation coefficient. I'll put the link for that website um, in the description as well. So in order to move the syntax into uh, the program so we can calculate this, we need to open up a new syntax file. So we go to the file menu, click new, and then syntax. And I've already copied the syntax, and now I'm just going to paste it into this syntax window. Now what you'll notice here at the bottom, uh, here in this list, is the actual pairs of data. So each of these pairs of data denote uh, a particular subject and the two scores that were gathered using the two different measurement techniques for each of these subjects. And so when you're, if you're using the syntax file, you can simply replace this sample data I have here for the actual data you have and, and run the syntax. So once we have our data entered, as we can see here, we're just going to run the syntax. So we go to the Run menu and click All, and it will run our data set for us and it will give us the output. So the first thing we want to look at is go to the Active Data Set section and it gives us a table that has some descriptive information. So here's the mean and the variance for each of the two measurement sets. Variable 1 and variable 2 are our two measurement sets. And so the value we're interested in is the R lowercase c, which is the lens concordance. And this is a 0.94 which is considered to be quite high. And again, like other correlation coefficients, the closer to one it is, uh, the stronger the relationship or the stronger the reliability between the two sets of measures. We can also see that we have a 95% confidence interval for this value, a lower and an upper value. There unfortunately is not universal agreement as to what level of Lin's value needs to be present for it to be considered to be excellent reliability. Uh, I will put a scale that, that I uh, have found and used um, in the description for this video as well, but the value of 0.94 would be considered almost perfect uh, reproducibility or concordance between the two sets of measurements. Uh, anything below 0.8 is considered to be uh, less than, less than uh, perfect. Now another thing we can look at is the scatter plot, again showing the distribution of the scores, and we can see that we do have a linear relationship here, and the, the data points are pretty closely associated with one another, indicating good association or good reproducibility. So in summary, I've demonstrated how to calculate Lin's concordance correlation coefficient, which can be used to determine the level of agreement between two sets of scores in other words, to evaluate the reproducibility or reliability of these two sets of scores. Uh, as I mentioned before, I have produced some additional material in the uh, description for this video, including some references. So hopefully you've been able to learn something in this video, and good luck using this in your own research.